Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show held together by only the purest duct tape and scissors. The Last of Us is a post-apocalyptic survival horror game that asks the player to constantly scrounge for supplies to survive encounters with the living dead and the deadly living. Every single scrap could mean the difference between life and death, but I personally always feel guilty taking the last bullet from the box. Can you beat The Last of Us on grounded difficulty without scavenging? The rules are simple. We're not allowed to use the triangle button to pick up any optional items whatsoever. That means we can't pick up new weapons, ammo, medkits, supplements, weapon parts, bricks, bottles, or even the tiniest scrap of useless rags. The only exceptions are a very small handful of items forced into our inventory through plot progression, such as Joel's backpack during the tutorial. It's also worth noting party members are able to throw ammo directly into the player's inventory, but only if you're completely dry on that particular gun. While not technically banned, I did go through the entire game without using this mechanic, partially because I didn't even realize it existed until the stream chat told me. So I guess it's like, pseudo-banned. You know, it's not in the rules, but don't be lame. It's also worth noting this run is similar to the speedrunning low percent category with the key difference being glitches are completely banned in the speedrun. I, on the other hand, am not a speedrunner and therefore not bound by any sense of honor and will do whatever it takes to be as bad at video games as is humanly possible. We'll be rationing our ammo throughout the entire playthrough, only ever firing a gun when we're certain that bullet is less valuable on you than in somebody else. And we're not just limited on offense, even your health bar is saved at each checkpoint, and without healing items, the only way to regain health is at a few very specific time skips in the story. Even the tiniest boo-boos will add up over time, so if an enemy manages to scratch you and the next time skip is an hour away, you may as well let them get the full course meal. With that out of the way, let's get this run started. Before you even get into battle, Tess will give you the first and last med kit of the entire run, locking you into a death stare until you give up and waste it. Along with the backpack, we'll receive our first gun, the pistol with four bullets. Politely explain to the firearm tutorial why you need that one bullet more than he does, punch out a few infected, and you'll enter the game's first firefight. Rather than wasting any bullets this early, bait the enemies out of cover and let Tess play the game for you. She's totally immune to bullets, so give her a few minutes and she'll win single-handedly and compliment you on your combat skills. Though it's sometimes required to kill all enemies, there are often more open stealth sections where your only goal is moving from point A to point B. You should only kill the enemies who directly block your path, and just try to nonchalantly crouch walk past everybody else, hoping they believe you when you tell them you don't exist. If they're unconvinced, beeline for the exit and punch out everybody you see. If you manage to get through the exit door without taking any bullets, you'll bank the next checkpoint and all enemies behind the door will spontaneously come to the conclusion you were telling the truth. I was actually kind of surprised. Some of these sections actually feel like they were specifically designed for the player to ignore them. For example, in this early section, if you rush along the right wall, the enemies I normally massacre on a casual playthrough won't even get the chance to get in position. Played this way, a handful of the game's combat encounters are just glorified cutscenes. Shortly after beginning downtown, you'll have to enter and descend a group of buildings with multiple infected encounters, including super dangerous one-hit KO clickers who can't be punched head-on. While it is possible to kill the clickers by getting hits in during certain animations, we're instead taking the short way down, courtesy of the speedrun community. If you jump over this ledge and aim your gun immediately, you'll end up standing in midair. From there, you can drop down and clip inside the building, reaching this out-of-bounds area. The geometry is invisible past this point, but try to make your way down and over to the waterfalls on your left. Aim your gun and finagle yourself a bit and you'll start dropping down. Once the skybox changes, pause the game and go grab a latte. You're now in another area of the game, sort of, and long story short, bad things happen if you try to drop in before the area fully loads. Once you see the area's items, unpause and finagle yourself to the right, landing you inbounds to reunite with veteran speedrunners Tess and Ellie, who managed to climb down the entire building in the time it took you to fall through it. Do note, this skip will cause you to take some fall damage, but I still personally recommend it because it looks cool. After another chunk of the game, teaching Ellie the way of the pseudo-pacifist and proper sprinting form, you'll reach Bill's Town. There are a couple tutorials here for Bill's Nail Bomb Traps, a mechanic that literally only exists for its own tutorial and will never show up again. To get through this tutorial, you'll be sacrificing two of your precious bullets to get by without losing health. Afterward, you'll enter one of Bill's famous improvised amusement park rides, and as you'd expect in any decent park, a revolver is provided free of charge on entry, materializing directly in Joel's hand. Plus, during this section, the revolver has infinite ammo, so unload it to your heart's content. As for how much ammo you have after the ride ends, the amount can vary, but you should at least have a full clip, which will be more than enough for the rest of the game. Later in Bill's town, a shotgun with three rounds will cutscene itself into our inventory, and Bill will force us to pick up a nail bomb. From here on, the game will start throwing more combat encounters featuring clickers, but this time we've got both Ellie and 
Bill to lend a hand. While Bill is technically capable of damaging them himself, the far more reliable strategy is to use teamwork and lead the clickers directly into your allies' faces. While they're distracted, punch the clickers a couple times, then back off before they counterattack. After doing this two or three times, they'll get punched out permanently. Just before entering the school is the largest forced battle yet seen in the game, pitting you against a horde of runners. Fighting them head-on is ill-advised, you'll need to separate some from the rest of the group. Climb up on a this bus, wait for a runner to follow, and start punching after they finish climbing. If you get their back to the edge, Joel will perform a super-fast one-hit KO ring-out kick. If you don't think you have enough time to pull it off safely, jump off the right side, run near the school, and climb up on this truck. Weave between this truck and the bus until eventually the group is thinned out. Bash your way into the school gym and you'll fight the first boss, a bloater, too dangerous to fight head-on, and thus the first actual enemy we'll be emptying our ammo into. Take out your revolver and make every bullet count by shooting its weak spot, its legs. Yeah, apparently its weak spot is its legs. I, I don't know, maybe there's like a leg destruction mechanic and they never bothered programming it for the boss? I, I legitimately do not understand. Luckily, understanding reality isn't required to live in it. Five clean revolver shots brought it down with plenty of ammo to spare, allowing us to safely pass gym class with flying colors. Most of those colors being red. The escape segment out of Bill's Town is easy, but there's a fun little glitch to show off. If an infected tries to attack Ellie in the truck, punch them a single time and they'll be so shocked by the experience they sit in place and silently contemplate why life brought them to this point until your inevitable murder. After Ellie fails her driving exam, you'll be thrust into another forced combat encounter. Run over to the left and jump out the window into this alleyway. Absolutely all enemies in this area must die to proceed, and this alley makes the perfect hidey hole to whittle them down. Whenever an enemy approaches, grab them from behind for a stealth kill. If a stealth kill isn't feasible, the area is pretty well covered, and any enemy who jumps over the window will leave themselves completely open to attack. With a little luck, they'll form a single file line leading directly into Joel's fist. The bookstore, as big and memorable of an arena as it is, is one of the simplest and easiest to sneak through. Hug the left wall and sneak up the stairs, then you'll only have to choke out a couple hunters before punching your way to freedom. At the hotel entrance, it's time for the biggest shenanigan to be seen in this entire run. Grab the floating pallet and position it along this point in the wall, trying to make as acute an angle as possible while still letting Joel grab the left side. This will partially clip you into the wall. Majigger yourself to the left while turning the pallet to the right, and once the camera starts zooming out, let go to push yourself fully out of bounds. Be very careful where you step in here. The laws of physics don't quite function like we mortal beings are used to. Follow the edge of the water away from the hotel, point yourself slightly to the right of the corner, dive underwater, and abandon this earthly plane. In this endless abyss, you lose almost all control of Joel, causing him to eternally swim further towards a fate only he will ever know, but could never hope to understand. You can, however, still control your vertical direction, which is the only way you can prevent Joel from ascending beyond the breaking point. Position the camera so the top of Joel's head reaches the horizon and wait about 15 to 17 strokes. Then point the camera up, continue for about 4 or 5 strokes, and return the camera to the horizon. The moment you see Joel T-posing, pause the game and, just like last time, wait for the new area to load. After on pausing, aim Joel toward the ground and hopefully you'll reach a checkpoint in this new dimension, completely skipping the hotel and a decent chunk of the city. I was too damn close. To the edge of the universe and back. Endure and survive. Excuse me. Next, we'll have to sneak past a battle tank the game seems oddly convinced Joel's already seen before. Sneaking only gets you up to this building's entrance. The moment you cross its threshold, you'll automatically enter alert mode, so book it, dive over into the left room to dodge the incoming enemies, and run outside. Rather than directly running around the building, take a wide angle behind the blue car. The tank is shooting at you now, and running straight would make you an easy target. Avoid the temptation to adjoin the melee enemy's face to your fist, instead jumping over the car on your left. Finally, use one shotgun blast on the gunner in the next alley. You don't need a kill shot. As long as it hits him, he'll hopefully be stunned long enough to let you ram the corner into safety. In the searchlight encounter, do a stealth kill on the lone gunman, turn off the generator, then book it for the building you came from. The counter here has plenty of cover, making it the perfect spot to open up a new location serving Joel's famous nationwide knuckle sandwiches. In the sewers is a combat encounter featuring clickers and a new enemy type, stalkers, upgraded deadlier versions of runners. To make matters worse, your only ally here is Sam, whose only combat strategy is being eaten alive. Use his strategy to its fullest potential, whittle down the group, and run for the area's endpoint when you get the chance. If you get followed, the triangle prompt will be grayed out, but with a bit of luck, the infected will lag behind, letting you boost Sam up and make your escape. 
Immediately after is another encounter featuring tons of clickers and runners. This time you're locked into an extremely small area, making offense nearly impossible. Thankfully, winning the battle isn't technically required. You're just waiting on a timer for Ellie and Sam to open the door behind you. Henry can act as sort of a stopgap to slow the flow of the infected moving towards you. It's not totally airtight, so once you get forced into the room, try to separate yourself using the furniture in the center. The enemy AI will hopefully be confused long enough for the door to open, and especially hopefully will leave an open path to the door. You'll probably be pretty low on health by now, but by hugging the right wall in the sniper section, you can reach the sniper's house encountering only a single enemy and without taking any damage. Once you reach the top floor and sit through the sniping minigame, you'll do a time skip and automatically restore your health to full. Be careful not to scavenge Ellie's high five and enter Jackson for a forced firefight against a group of bandits. Unlike most other firefights, the arena here is pretty narrow and doesn't leave you many options for sneaking around. As far as Naughty Dog is concerned, this is a gunfight, but just like in the gunfight tutorial, you don't have to be the one doing the gunning. Tommy and an endless supply of cloned engineers are fully capable of fighting the battle for you, though they they may not be quite so capable of taking it seriously. If there are no enemies in range, you'll have to coax your allies forward by moving forward yourself. And if that still isn't enough, shifting around can cause the enemies to do the same, usually making themselves easier targets. When you reach the upstairs room, ignore the enemies and run straight for the open window, then make a break for the bottom middle of the next arena before everybody gets into position. A few enemies will jump down to join you. Punch them out, then immediately run for shelter, since you're now in the sights of an Olympic-level Molotov chucker. Trust me, this guy doesn't even need eyes. If he wants you to burn and you're in range, you are going to burn. Wait in shelter long enough and he'll ostensibly forget where you are. Search the I see him! Here we go! Oh, shit! Track him down. Got you now, asshole! Right here! Behind the- Fuck! I see him! He's over here! Behind the crates! It's on! Find him. Right here! Behind the crates! Over here! Come on! He's over here! Here he is! Find him. Oh, got you now, asshole! Here he is! Come on! He's over here! Behind the crate! Oh, over hey! He's over here! Come on. There you are! It's on! After about 15 lifetimes and one bathroom break, the last bandit fell, opening the way into the next building and final segment of this battle. This final building is thankfully a lot shorter and easier. Ellie and Maria will be assisting you from the opposite side, and the enemy AI seems to have been turned down yet one more notch. After a few more minutes, you'll be triumphantly paraded around town as the hero who managed to single-handedly sit back and drink a latte. The next few combat encounters can mostly be done in full stealth with little issue, and there's another time skip to refill your health after leaving Jackson. Even the college bloater encounter is surprisingly easy. There's nothing stopping you from crouch walking directly in front of the clickers and bloaters' faces straight down the hallway, leaving them totally oblivious until you're already gone. The College Hunter Ambush features a couple enemies carrying axes, capable of an automatic one-hit KO even while being comboed. However, to balance this, if you lead them into Ellie, she'll come to the rescue with her own one-hit KO melee attack. As for the rest of the enemies, I found the far back room to be the safest home base. Once you've cleared out the first group, briefly walk past this threshold and run straight back to base since you're now being chased by another axe guy. Once you successfully fatally wound yourself, you'll be given infinite ammo for the escape sequence, after which you can die a painful death in peace. With Joel dead, you'll be put in Ellie's shoes, heading directly into quite possibly the hardest section of the entire game. Clickers and runners bombard you while locked in an extremely small room. You die in just two hits, Ellie is incapable of stunning enemies with melee attacks, and, most horrifying of all, your only ally is Nolan North. The one saving grace that makes this possible is Ellie's knife, allowing her special one-hit KO melee attacks on any enemies currently eating Nolan North. Even this won't be enough if too many infected get in the room at once, but luckily for the entire coal mine section you've got a rifle with four shots and a bow with nine arrows. Use your bow to thin out dense groups while being mindful of your ammo. You'll only want to use about half of it by the end. After about an hour or two of attempts memorizing most of the spawn patterns and finding the most appetizing way to present Nolan North, I managed to escape with four bullets and three arrows remaining. Still through the next couple sections to reach the next combat arena, this one thankfully being a lot easier since you have plenty of room to run around. A bloater will spawn in near the end, but this one is even more pathetic than the first. Fire one singular rifle round into its foot for a hilariously underwhelming one-hit KO. By the end, I had exactly two rifle shots remaining. This is ever so coincidentally exactly enough. Two enemies guard the door at the end of the next couple stealth sections. Shoot them both down to enter the final doorway towards victory. Just kidding, it doesn't lead to victory. It actually leads to Nolan North. 
With Joel's Papa Bear senses tingling, he'll come back from the grave to tiptoe past everything in sight with bloody fury, channeling the raw, untamed essence of Troy Baker to finally defeat Nolan North once and for all. The first encounter is supposedly a forced firefight, but if you make your way around the right side of the house into the backyard, every enemy in the area will realize they're fighting a video game protagonist and finally make the correct choice to flee in terror. Except for these two guys, but I skipped the cutscene so I can only assume they had a heartfelt conversation with Joel, discovered the error of their ways, and happily departed more complete rather than less complete individuals. Once in town, there will be a heavy snowstorm, making all the guards twice as blind, allowing you to sneak past without using any resources whatsoever, and finally bidding Nolan North a heartfelt farewell. Just in time for the last big infected encounter, the stream chat told me about a trick to sneak around more easily. While aiming your gun, you'll move at the perfect crouch walking speed, letting you sneak past clickers and bloaters without making any noise, and allowing you to easily reach the endpoint without incident. The final infected of the entire game is this troll, who will demand a simple two-bullet sacrifice to pass. Once Joel successfully teaches Ellie how to swim, you'll enter the hospital for the final human encounter. Immediately run down the hallway to the right, then crouch walk to the opposite side of the hospital, cutting through this room. The guard on the left here will turn his head in three directions, ever so conveniently giving exactly enough of a window to slip by his blind spots. Let these three guards run by, then run behind cover in the next room to prevent the last magically omniscient guard from acknowledging the fact he knows your precise location. Sneak past him to the stairs, leading up to the final hallway. It's now technically safe to use all the ammo you've accumulated, but luckily you shouldn't have to. The rooms on the right are near completely empty, making it incredibly easy to crouch walk to the far end. Two more guards will be hiding next to the door, but thankfully they've been cheating on their eye exams and won't notice you jumping over past them to officially complete the final combat encounter. Well, I mean, I think this guy might have noticed me. I hadn't realized I was safe until I was already murdering him. <laughs> With Jerry successfully self-defended against and Joel finally redeeming himself in quotation marks, The Last of Us scavengeless run is mission complete. If you'd like to try the run out yourself, it's definitely recommended. While not quite as impossible or as original as I was initially expecting, it's still a fun, intense way to replay the game. Just keep in mind, if you intend on outright speedrunning, the skip glitches are completely banned. Before heading out, credit goes to the current grounded low percent record holder P-Dub and speedrunner Anthony Caliber. I referenced both P-Dub's archived run and Anthony's skip tutorials heavily while doing my own run. Also, if you weren't already aware, I'm currently working on a Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories quote-unquote level 1 run at twitch.tv slash gamechamp3k. Just an advance warning, don't expect me to be good at video games. It's mostly just chill conversation and grinding till we reach the end game. And finally, special thanks to all Patreon backers, including all the bugs Yugi has killed, and Drew Cyber, Mrs. Sekman, Les Lamb, RB Drox, All in Zero, Chris Nate, Alexander Botkin, On You, Ikrira, Chosen Muffin, and On42, The Bass Singer, Vincent Hall, Vincent YT, Alex Nelson, Yellow Alert, Lively Leader, The Cracky Gamer, Lady Ashley, Luminescent Dragon, Jace Nilges, Backsoy, David 20 Covers, Z Master, Praetor, Vaith. Whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal, and Pee Wee Wan tank outside of Wubicon. He's well protected, but with the white team, we can punch through those defenses. Take the Rory Kelly, Lane Robert Leesman, Blake Long, Queen Sapphire, Crustacean Creep, Liddy Kitty, Jace Harsh, Plum Sweater, Cam the Can One, Nathaniel Kalita, Sander Kozak, Celestial Cookie, 8-Bit Mistrevious, Procrastinating Destiny, Epic Evan, 921, Alex Likes to Eat, Yield Foreign, Super Davio, Ace of Hearts, Random Goy, Misfunctional, Jorb, KK, Maverick Swordsman, Gussios, Alistair Echoes, John Frary, Zoe, Epic Antos, Multicore, Brandon Jessup, Aaron Bailey, The Green Scorpion, Game Champ says Trans Rights are Human Rights, Boom Boxy, John Miller, Star Captain Eli Shaba of Clan Ghost Bear, SNS Main, Lero Rario, Dino Nerd Ghost, Christopher Gunderson, Curbs D50, Damian R, Yap Alonzo, Wave It, Platypoo 115, You Broke the Wrong Crate, Test Failed, Dance Arios, This Challenge Was a Detast, James James Simon Lusos. Who gotta have a very high IQ to watch Game Champ 3K? Their humor is ludicrously subtle and without a grasp of theoretical gaming. Chronosanthium, what's that noise? Dworo 25, Blue Moon Von Idaho, Brit Fake. Drawn by AJ's Haha ha, Funny Meme Name, The Nonchalant Nacho, Bragger Jester, Andrew D. Wood, Kid, Very Gucci, That One Night Five, Poopy Whoopy, I Made a Stinky Winky, Blue Boop, Baby, Caden Bass, West 450, Riley Anderson, Avellian, Paul Rosso, Chenza, Neo Sandman 4040, Zith Agle, Arcombs, Robbie Cohenstrom. When we hit 200 Patreon supporters, Game Champ 3000 has to read the Patreon names in a funny voice for one video. Mars Becker, Salty Sweet, World's Slowest Game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, 1, 2, 3, Scissors. I, the challenger of this game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, choose Scissors. Man Doggy, Kimzy59, Pie Boy, Talmadro. I love you, Game Champ, I be Mackie, Sinique is pronounced Sinique, and Sulfuric Boss. And LR Minor 202. It's so weird how I said and twice there. Let me know how much this video sucks and how to improve in the comments below. Endure and survive for watching and get out of my house. Wondering if I missed my chance. Oh, nope. There we go. 
Okay, so, yeah, it's gray now. Then it went black. Uh... I'm still alive. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I've lost control. Ground control to Major Joel. <laughs> Ground control to Major Joel. <laughs> This is ground control to Major Joel. You've really made the grade. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics. <laughs>